Hey everybody, so today we are going to discuss about vector. So vector is the simplest container in STL. It is simple array having some extended functionalities like it is resizable and we will see other further. So for including vector, firstly we have to include some header like include vector. So in this video we are going to discuss how we can initialize a vector, how we can add access or remove the elements and how we can iterate over the vector. So these are the some functions that we are going to discuss. So let's start. So firstly, for initializing a vector, we use the syntax. So here we are writing vector and v. So this means that we are initializing a vector that is of data type int and its name is v. So by writing this, we have initialized a vector of zero size. We can give different data types like a string or a double. Now, if we want to define the size of the vector, we can just give it in the parenthesis and here we have initialized the vector of size a. In a vector, all the elements get initialized with the value 0 by default. We can also change these values by giving it in the input. For example, here I have changed the default value by minus 1. So now my vector is of the size 8 and all the values are initialized by minus 1. So if we want to add a new element in a vector, we can use pushback. So when I am writing v dot pushback 4, it is adding 4 at the end of the vector. So we can access all the elements like we access them in an array. So if we write a is equal to v3, it is giving the value of minus 1, that is at third index. And the index is starting from 0. We can always resize the array and make it larger or smaller. For example, my vector size was earlier 9 and I have resized it to 10. So it created a new space and initialized it with 0. If suppose I have given it resize 6, so it will delete the last 4 elements and we get the vector with first 6 elements. Now if we want to delete an element from the end, we can use popback. So when we write popback, it just deletes the last element in the vector. We can anytime get the size of the vector by writing v.size. So if we want to iterate over the array, we can easily use a loop from 0 to the size of the vector and it will work the same way it do in an array. So here, if we want to check our array is empty or not, we can always compare the size with 0, but that's not the best thing. So if we want to check if it is not empty, we can use not v.empty. Because the thing is, for checking an empty vector, we just want to know if it have at least one element or not. It doesn't matter to us if it have 100 elements or 1000 elements. So using v.empty is always better. Now, for accessing an element, v.begin gave us the starting point of the array, whereas v.end gave us the last point of the array. So we can use these positions to do various tasks. For example, if we want to sort, we can just write sort from v.begin to v.end, or we can reverse the array by writing v.begin to v.n. Now we know that we can add an element at the end of the vector by pushback. But if we want to add a new element in the middle of the vector, we can always use insert. So we have to first give the position and then the element. So here we are adding a new element 22 in the beginning of the vector. Or we can add a new element 15 at the position that is 3 unit away from the beginning of the vector. Or we can use end to define the position. For example, here we are adding 22 at the second last position. Or here we are adding 100 in the end. We can also delete the element. We can use erase for this. So we have to just give the position from where we want to delete the element. So here I am deleting the element from the index 3. That is that is 3 units from the beginning of the vector. Or I can give 2 positions so that it deletes everything between them. So here I am deleting all the elements from the second index to the sixth index. Now, as we have seen earlier, that we can iterate of the vector with the help of index loop. But if we want an iterator, then we can define an iterator something like this vector end two semicolons, then writing iterator and then giving it a name. So here we have initialized an iterator it and then we, we are giving it starting point v.begin and then writing the condition. 
and for getting the value we are dereferencing it by writing it star it so that we can get value out of it or we can always write auto or we can use the range based rule so in this x is a temporary variable so now as we are done with all the functions we can also nest vectors to make 2d or 3d structures for example if we want to make a 2d matrix we can nest a vector like this so for example i want to make a matrix of m into n size and initialize it with maybe minus 1 so this is how we can do this so here i have made a vector of vectors and named it matrix it is of n rows and the vectors inside it are of m columns and all are initialized with minus 1 so we got this matrix filled with minus 1 so that's pretty much it so this was everything you need to know about vectors i hope this is clear now go and try your hands on vector and its all functions and i will see you guys in the next